All right, what we've got here is a solar system. This is a space themed lizard landscape. Obviously, a lot of you are watching this because you have to build a solar system for a school project. Uh, this is designed with the same techniques as everything else on the website, lizardlandscapes.com. Everything is non toxic when done if uh, all of these steps are uh, followed. Some of these steps are unnecessary if you're just doing this for a school project. Anyway, got the sun there, that's the hide. This is, uh, if you're doing this for a lizard. So this is hollow. All right, you want to wear one of these dust masks, protect you from the dust. So I'm going to measure out a base, the base you saw in the beginning there. Uh, I measured out 25 by 22 and a half. Now if I had to do this over again, I would just make it 22 inches by 22. It really doesn't matter. It's, it's all depending on how large you're supposed to make this or how big your uh, lizard terrarium is or tarantula terrarium. Using Loctite's power grab, I'm going to glue together these two pieces just using uh, polystyrene insulation sheets. I'm going to trace around an old paint can to create a perfect circle. So this is my guide for the sun to be in the corner. I'm going to create a whole bunch of pieces that are one and a half inches in width. I'm going to cut these out and then measure one and a half inches. So this is if you're going to create uh, the sun yourself. What I would recommend is going to an arts and crafts store and getting one of those pre-made uh, foam spheres. A lot of them, uh, the stores will sell those spheres in like a half sphere, which is perfect for this project. But if you're creating this, uh, if you're wanting to create the sun yourself, what I'm doing here is really just kind of a basic igloo style way of building. So here are those uh, uh, pre-made foam spheres you can get at like an arts and crafts store. You can cut them in half. Some of the stores will sell them already in a half uh, sphere. But with the uh, homemade sun just gluing together again with Loctite's power grab in the igloo style and create more pieces and I'm gradually angling every piece inward so as to attempt to create uh, more of a sphere like shape that's how it's looking so far and consistently angling these pieces inward so they meet uh, towards the top. I put a top piece on there. And filling in some gaps. There'll be a lot of gaps that occur when you do any type of project. These are those foam spheres I was talking about. Perfect for this type of project where you can cut them in half and uh, you've got your planets. Like I say, they sell bigger, larger ones of these you can use for the sun. I'm going to cut these in half, at least two of them. I think three is what I used. For the other smaller planets, uh, I'm just using or taking a piece of the polystyrene and kind of molding it or I guess picking it apart to the point where it's in the shape of a sphere. So what you want to do is go online and uh, try to find NASA's website as to the order of the planets. We've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, the asteroid belt, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. That is if you still consider Pluto to be a planet. What I'm doing here is trying to create a little black hole, even though we don't have a black hole in our solar system. 
So I drew out a little shape. I'm going to cut out this essentially basic hole, even though this is probably not what a black hole looks like. I'm going to take uh, some of those pieces from that beveled piece that I cut out earlier and just try to accentuate this shape. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the rings for Saturn. And you just want to measure this out and obviously the shape for it to fit into using the Loctite's power grab and just gluing that down again. This is the grouting stage. Now if you're just doing this for a school project this is really an unnecessary stage, although if you're wanting to add uh, the texture to the sun or anything else, the grout really is what enables you to do that. Plus, it strengthens the structure. It'll make it last longer. Um, if you're creating this for a pet lizard, you really should put grout onto it. toughens it up. At least two layers. The more layers you put on, the better. It just uh, becomes stronger and stronger. So I'm putting more grout onto the, the sun. And I didn't quite get a perfect sphere with that igloo creation. So what I'm going to do later is mix up some thicker grout and try to even out some of that uh, non-sphere-like look. Mixing together uh, more color into a second layer. I add the color so I can tell where I left off. And you want to turn it over and, and be sure and get the other side of each piece. So I'm mixing up a much thicker batch of grout, so a little bit less, actually a lot less water, and uh, applying it to the sun here and what I did was applied this all over the structure and then I let it sit for a good five minutes and then went back as I'm doing here with a brush and essentially I'm stippling the uh, thicker grout in order to create that texture. You can really see it there with thicker grout in combination with the brush hitting it and pulling it up creates that uh, texture. Of course you want to paint your base black when you're in space. We got that almost all the way black and once this is dry I'm going to set it aside all night for it to dry. Uh, put on some rubber gloves and basically get rid of all the sharp parts that are created when you do that stippling. What I'm doing here is mixing together some very light yellow. You got a lot of white, you got a little bit of yellow, mix it together, and this is the first layer of the color of the uh, sun. So you can already see that texture there. And then uh, putting on more layers, in this case sort of a burnt orange, where you load the brush full of the paint and then remove most of it and then the texture that you put with that stippling uh, will show up and it won't kill all of that you know underneath bright yellow color so you can do this with uh, a ton of different layers orange and red you know you might go back to yellow What I'm doing here is using some of that very light yellow going back in and trying to make it kind of inconsistent looking. Mixing together a very dark red, so black and red mixed together, and uh, creating some sunspots. So you want to be careful, you can really overdo this. You want to just put it here and there. And I'm going to go ahead and try to color Jupiter. So I'm mixing together an orange and brown color. I'm going to go ahead and put that layer on, let it dry, and go to Mercury, which is apparently gray in color. And then you've got Venus, 
which is sort of like a light yellow. Earth, of course, the first layer I'm going to put down is blue. I'll go back and put down some other layers. We've got Mars, which is more of like a reddish orange. I'm going to skip over Jupiter. Uh, Saturn is more of like pale yellow. And then Uranus is more of a more of a light blue, as well as Neptune. And Pluto is essentially like a brown color. And it mixed together some of the highlight uh, colors for Jupiter. It's really the planet with the most variation in color. And you've got that the storm system. It's essentially a huge gas planet. You get the big red eye, you gotta put that in there of course. And putting in some land detail in the earth. And I really did not do that great of a job in trying to create those smaller planets in a perfect sphere. You could obviously go to you know, when you're at the arts and crafts store and get smaller perfect spheres. But going back in with some black and trying to clean up some edges where I made some mistakes. Ahead and put in the asteroid belt, which is right after Mars, before Jupiter. And try to, with some very dark blue, accentuate uh, that black hole area. And obviously with a paintbrush and a little bit of white, you can put in some stars. And this is essentially ready if you're creating it for a school project. If you're creating this for a lizard or any other type of space, you know, motif or theme, you want to seal it with a non-toxic sealant. What I'm using here is Mod Podge, all surface sealant. There's a whole bunch of different types of Mod Podge really doesn't matter which one you use. They should be all non-toxic, although I think I've only used two. So you might check on the, the bottle itself. The sealants, even if you're not creating this for a pet lizard, it'll, it'll strengthen it as well, just like the grout, and uh, obviously make it last a lot longer. So there you have it, a space-themed lizard landscape, or solar system model for a school project.